start off by telling you a little bit about how I became an astronaut. Uh, I start with this picture. This isn't the picture of me, but it very well could have been me. I was six years old when the first American astronaut launched into space. It was a long time ago, May 5th, 1961. And at my primary school, they brought all the students to the gymnasium. We sat on the floor, and I watched the launch on a small black and white TV. And as soon as our astronaut was in space, I said to myself, I want to do that. I had no idea what astronauts did, so ever since a young boy, I knew I wanted to go into space. I wanted to launch on a rocket, I wanted to experience zero gravity, and I wanted to see sunrises and sunsets with my own eyes from space. So I always knew what I wanted to do in my life. The question is, how do you get there? How do you get from point A, I want to be an astronaut, to point B, I'm up in space? About two months later, I got the phone call from NASA, and uh, I answered it, and they said, Don, thank you very much for applying. We had a lot of good candidates. We didn't select you, but good luck in the future. And I hung up that phone, and I was in shock. I thought I had made it in that third time, but here for the third time, they said no. First time, no. Second time, no. Third time, they interviewed me and got to know me, but the result was the same, no. There was a strong message for me from NASA, right? We don't want you. That's what I thought, they, that that's the message they were sending to me. And I decided I need to give up on this silly dream of mine. I worked hard. I gave it my best effort. I tried three times. Nobody would fault me for, for giving up. And I decided it was time to move on and do something else. So I decided I would go to bed, get a good night's sleep, and then in the morning when I woke up, I would put together a new plan for what to do with my career that didn't involve being an astronaut. So I went to bed that night, and I woke up the next morning, and the very first thought that popped into my head when I woke up was, I still want to be an astronaut. So I asked myself, is there any more of these little things that I could do to increase my chances for that next astronaut selection? I passed all the medical tests, the interview went very well once again, and then I just sat back and waited. And again, it was about two months later, I got another phone call from NASA, and this time they said, uh, Don, are you still interested in being an astronaut? Because we'd like to offer you the job. And I said something very intelligent, you can quote me on this. I said, uh, ha -ba, ha -ba, ha -ba, ha -ba. <laughs> I couldn't even talk. I finally got the words yes out of my mouth. And then I hung up the phone, and I was jumping up and down, yelling and screaming for 10 minutes, because I knew I made it into the program. It'll take time to get there. And I just want to encourage you to keep working. Don't give up on, on that. So what do you think the lesson is from my story here today? Don't give up. What else? Be patient. Be patient. Have ambition. What else? Persistence. Work hard. Way in the back. Follow your dream. Determination. Yeah, you got to believe in yourself, right? Believe in yourself. Yeah. You hit all the strong points here. You want to work hard. This stuff doesn't come easy. No matter how small. Keep working towards that. Never give up on it. Look for these little things that you can do to help yourself, to help improve your background. And always ask for help along the way. If you can't uh, you know, do it yourself, ask people for help. And, and that's how you can get there. And then 90 seconds into the flight, it just blew up. Out over the Atlantic Ocean, it just blew up into many pieces. It all fell into the ocean there. Uh, totally destroyed the space shuttle and uh, killed all seven astronauts that day. 90 seconds into the mission. Now, when NASA has a problem like this, you know, they do three things. First thing they, they try to decide is what happened? What caused this? You know, why did it happen? Then the second thing that NASA does is they fix that problem. Once they, they identify the problem, they fix it. And then the third thing NASA does, and they do it extremely well, they move on. So you don't have an accident and say, well, I'm going to quit. That was too hard. We don't do that. 
So when we have a problem, when we have an accident, we identify what it is, we've got great engineers that can solve it, find new solutions, fix that problem, and then we move on with the program. Martin Luther King Jr., one of our African American leaders, um, he said, the time is always right to do the right thing. You know, you don't have to wait for the right moment to do the right thing. You can do it right now. The time is always perfect for that. And the second part was, people shouldn't be afraid to ask questions or speak up, because making their professional opinion known is not only important, it's their responsibility. Many of these NASA engineers, they were afraid to speak up because their bosses were saying, you know, I'll fire you if you say we shouldn't launch. People were afraid of getting fired, of losing their jobs. And, and uh, the philosophy nowadays is not like that anymore. We know, you know, we gotta listen to everybody.